Guess what I have. What? <gasps> Those darn squirrels fly south. Mm -hmm. By Adam Rubin, illustrated by Daniel Selmy. <laughs> yes, those darn squirrels. Those darn squirrels. <laughs> Old man Fookwire lived at the edge of town in a beautiful forest full of birds and squirrels. But he was such a grump, he scolded fireflies for being too bright. He yelled at clouds for being too fluffy. And when the lilacs bloomed, he pinched his nose with a clothespin so he wouldn't be able to spell their spell. Well, he's a grump. Even for a grump like Fookwire, it had been a glorious summer. He'd spent most of his time painting the colorful birds that visited his backyard. Sometimes, by accident, he painted a squirrel. Other times, the squirrels painted themselves. What? <laughs> then Fookwire would shake his old man fist and shout, Those darn squirrels! <laughs> but now it was fall. The weather had turned crisp, the leaves had changed colors, and soon the birds would fly south for the winter. Folkwire would have to endure the long, cold winter months alone. 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 Well, not exactly alone. The squirrels would be there, too. Normally, the squirrels spent winters playing ping pong, building ships in bottles, and knitting. But this year, they had other plans. They were curious about where the birds went for winter vacation. So, they decided to follow them. Now, not many people know this, but squirrels have a comprehensive understanding of aerodynamic engineering. They built gyrocopters from pine cones. They built gliders from leaves. They even built a zeppelin from an old shopping bag. When the first frost arrived, the bonga birds took off, followed by the baba birds and the yaba birds. They circled the house, waved goodbye to Fookwire, and headed south. The flugel birds spent a few minutes scaring up the last bit of the farfel seeds. Then he took off too. Fookwire pouted as the sound of flapping wings faded into the distance. He turned to go inside and then heard a rustling in the trees. A rustling followed by a whir. A whir followed by a buzz. It was the squirrels watching their own flying machines one by one. Some of the aircraft flew straighter than others, but eventually they all flew up, up, and away from the harvest-colored treetops and into the cool blue autumn air. The old man could hardly believe his eyes. Great googly moogly, he said. It's a whole flock of flying squirrels. <laughs> the squirrels followed the flugel birds for days. They flew through the night. They flew through the rain. They even flew through turbulence. Finally, just when the squirrels thought they couldn't fly any longer, the flugelbird swooped down and landed gracefully on a beach. The squirrels landed with a crunch. The beach was so warm and beautiful, and the squirrels were so happy to be done flying, they decided to have a fiesta. They went swimming and ate mangoes with salt and lime. They played the marimba and danced the merengue. The party lasted all night long. Over the next few weeks, the squirrels made themselves right at home. There were many new plants to snack on. There were also many new birds to see. 
There were cocoa birds, kiki birds, and carumba birds. There were too many birds to count. One of the birds reminded the squirrels of someone they knew. Deep in the snowy woods, a strange noise woke old man Fookwire from his nap. It was coming from the telephone. He was getting a call. When he picked up the receiver, the operator asked if he would accept the charges for a long-distance call from the village of Santa Baca. There was a chattering on the line. Those darn squirrels! shouted Fookwire. The old man missed the birds, and even though he would never admit it, he missed the squirrels too. So he decided to join them. Fookwire had a car that he kept under a tarp in a shed by the stream. He had bought it in 1957 and had driven it only twice. He loaded it up with his easel, paints, and brushes, fixed himself a snack of cottage cheese with pepper, and hit the road. Then he drove 12 miles an hour all the way to Santa Baca. The nice people behind him had plenty of time to admire his car. <laughs> Finally, Fookwire arrived in the little village. He spotted the flugelbird flying overhead and followed him to the beach. When he got out of the car, the squirrels gave him a big hug. Maybe it was the nice weather. Maybe it was the beautiful scenery. Maybe it was the squirrels dancing in his pants. <laughs> but for the first time in a very long time, the old man laughed. Soon, Fuguire set up his easel and began to paint the locals. Da ba da boo! sang the cocoa bird. Ba da ba boo! sang the kiki bird. Fuquire was overjoyed. The birds here are even more amazing than the birds back home, he exclaimed. Hurrah, <laughs> muttered the flugelbird. The sun was very hot. Fuquire sweated, but he kept on painting. Fuquire sweltered, but he kept on painting. Then Fuquire slumped forward face first into his painting. The squirrels dragged the old man into the shade and gave him water. He was as red as a bonga bird. He decided it was time to go home. The squirrels decided to go with him. They had a wonderful vacation, but after all, it was almost time for their annual snow fort building competition. They had one last snack of mango. Then Fookwire waved goodbye to the birds, and they all piled into the car. The trip back home was much quicker for all of them. The squirrels drove most of the way. <laughs> oh, storm squirrels! In your car. <laughs> okay, I want everybody to try say those darn squirrels like her. Squirrels like her. Ready? Go. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>